Our top story now, India will reach carbon neutrality by 2070. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced as part of a five-point action plan that included reducing emissions to 50% by 2030, making the boldest pledge on Monday at the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow, where he also urged developed countries to deliver on their promise of climate financing. India is among the major emitters, the third largest in the world, to not have indicated any deadline or even a tentative pathway towards such a net zero goal. India, China and the United States, the other two major polluters have indicated 2060 and 2050 as potential deadlines for capping their net emissions. Net zero emissions refer to achieving an overall balance between greenhouse gas emissions produced and greenhouse gas emissions removed from the atmosphere. वर्ष 2070 तक भारत नेट जीरो का लक्ष्य हासिल करेगा। फ्रेंड्स, क्लाइमेट चेंज पर इस वैश्विक मंथन के बीच मैं भारत की ओर से इस चुनौती से निपटने के लिए पांच अमृत तत्व रखना चाहता हूं, पंचाम्रत की सौगात देना चाहता हूं। पहला भारत 2030 तक अपनी नॉन फोसिल एनर्जी कैपेसिटी को 500 गीगावॉट तक पहुंचाएगा दूसरा भारत 2030 तक अपनी 50% एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी से पूरी करेगा तीसरा भारत अब से लेकर 2030 तक के कुल प्रोजेक्टेड कार्बन एमिशन में एक बिलियन टन की कमी करेगा। चौथा, 2030 तक भारत अपनी अर्थव्यवस्था की कार्बन इंटेंसिटी को 45 परसेंट से भी कम करेगा। Alright, so those are the five big commitments that India has made on climate change. Moving on now to other news and Maharashtra's former Home Minister Anil Deshmukh has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate after more than 12 hours of questioning at their office in Mumbai in connection with a money laundering case. A Mr. Deshmukh, who had stepped down earlier this year from his post amid a row over bribery allegations against him, was refused relief by the Bombay High Court on Friday as he appealed for the cancellation of the summons by the probe agency. In a video statement that he released, the 71-year-old NCP leader had said that all allegations against him were false. Mr. Deshmukh was accused of corruption and extortion by Mumbai's ex-top cop Parambir Singh. In a letter to Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre, Parambir Singh had accused Deshmukh of interference and using the police to extort up to 100 crore every month. So these allegations against him, Parambir Singh, also, however, remains missing. Remember, Anil Deshmukh had skipped several uh, several summons. So, laundering case uh, against him and uh, the uh, enforcement directorate arresting him. Anil Deshmukh arrested after 12 hours of questioning. He appeared before the ED after the Bombay High Court had refused uh, to grant him relief against the ED summons. We investigation in cooperate investigation. in the section 3. आगे आप लोगों को क्या रणनीति है? हम कल कोर्ट में उनको प्रोड्यूस करेंगे तो वहाँ हम रिमांड को आपस करेंगे। well, let's go across to Saurabh Gupta now for more. And Saurabh, as expected, Anil Deshmukh finally appearing before the Enforcement Directorate and being arrested. What happens now? Well, as his lawyer has said that they will oppose the remand, which means that they will argue against uh, custodial uh, investigation of the ED. And then, of course, they will also perhaps uh, argue against the fact that the ED is arresting him. Now, the arrest was a late night development well after, uh, you know, uh, 12, uh, 12, 12 o'clock. It, it almost happened at 12.31. And after more than 12 hours of questioning, Anil Deshmukh landed up at the Enforcement Directorate office a little before 12 noon. He was arrested shortly after midnight. And this, of course, is take, uh, taking place after his uh, appearance at the ED office for uh, investigation. Now, Anil Deshmukh had skipped summons earlier. But remember, in all of this, the complainant in this case is still on the run. He's disappeared. And Anil Deshmukh also actually had disappeared, but he resurfaced here today. 
but the complainant, who is the former commissioner of police, Parambi Singh, is still nowhere to be found. Uh, and that is something that Anil Deshmukh has mentioned, that, uh, you know, while uh, he uh, says that he was exhausting his legal options before appearing before the ED, the fact is that uh, the complainant in this case, which is the former police commissioner of Mumbai, Parambi Singh, is uh, nowhere to be found still. And has gone missing and is believed to have left the country, which, of course, uh, Anil Deshmukh is going to strongly, uh, sort of, you know, mention while he uh, uh, opposes the remand and the custodial interrogation. But the ED is, of course, going to ask for custodial interrogation, saying that this is, of course, a, a, a case that requires investigation given the nature of the allegations that have been made, including serious allegations of, uh, you know, corruption. But at the end of the day, the man who uh, has made these complaints uh, run, is nowhere to be found and is also facing several corruption cases. Lookout notices have been issued and... Uh, the fact is that it is also believed that he has left the country and that is, of course, former police commissioner Parambit Singh. All right, uh, Saurav. So quite a sensational and sordid case in the sense involving of the former Home Minister of Maharashtra and the Mumbai top cop and these allegations of corruption and extortion. In other news, counting of votes for three Lok Sabha and 29 assembly seats across 13 states and the Union Territory of Dadra and Nagar Haveli will begin uh, today. In fact, it must have already begun. Now, of the 29 seats, the BJP held six of them, the Congress nine, the rest were with regional parties. The Lok Sabha seats for which by-elections were held are Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Amandi in Himachal Pradesh and Khandwa in Madhya Pradesh. The sitting members had died in all these three constituencies. So, counting of uh, for uh, these uh, seats is taking place today. And uh, tennis star Leander Pace, who recently joined the Trinamool Congress, uh, spoke to NDTV on his political plans. Let me just start, Leander, with the obvious question. What made you jump into politics? Hi Srini, thank you so much for having me on with you today. Um, for the last 30 years, I've been playing for the people, playing for the flag, and uh, traveling in the global sport. Mm. I try to do India proud. So in that, uh, now that my tennis career has come to an end and I've retired, I have the time, I have the passion, and I really have the energy to come in and try and serve the people, to do something that makes a large difference to our country. I spent a lot of time in Goa, and now that I live there, I've been doing my homework, and I see there's huge opportunities in Goa to right. do some good. Uh, but Leander, uh, what made you join the Trinamool? Because there are a number of parties, options in Goa, as you know. Trinamool is just barely taking baby steps. Why did you choose them? Just like my tennis, I've had uh, some great opportunities to do some uh, good things. Uh, my relationship with Mamta Didi uh, goes back to when I was 15, 16 years old. When she was the sports minister and uh, I was 15 years old and I, uh, at that point of time there was no foreign currency, no credit card that could be taken internationally. She actually looked after me as a young boy and she supported my tennis. She got corporate sponsors behind me. Hmm. And I feel that uh, she's, a, she's a real powerhouse and a woman of her word. For me, uh, okay. Mamta Didi is a true champion because when she says something, she does deliver. And uh, when she gave me this opportunity, I'm very grateful to the party also for giving me the opportunity to serve the people. So, for me, there's a, a very simple thought, Srini. Right. I've always played for the people. I've always played for the saffron, white and green. Hmm. Right now, my vehicle has just changed. Um, okay. The light still burns to make a difference. It's just a different vehicle. So, did you uh, approach the Trinamool or did, did they approach you? And if I may ask, who, who specifically approached you from the Trinamool, if, if that's what happened? Well, I've had opportunities over uh, many years now, uh, Shrini, to get into uh, politics. But tennis has been taking so much of uh, priority and focusing on trying to win Grand Slams, focusing on trying to win Olympic medals, focusing sure. on putting India on the map to get world records. Hmm. Now that uh, that's been achieved, I feel that uh, the next opportunity for, for me 
is to go and serve the people directly no no that's I, fine but i'm asking who did they approach you and and who made the who made the approach yes so uh, i was directly approached uh, by uh, the trinamool party okay and uh, in that um i first wanted to find out as to what my opportunities are to make a difference hmm. and for me it's uh, it, it's really a, a great sense of pride to be able to serve the people so okay. for me it was very important to see the the opportunity that would i get the opportunity to do whatever i wanted to do okay. you know now in that yeah fair enough now you know when you talk about goa and wanting to do stuff for goa i think it's also important to just uh understand for for people generally and for goans what your connection to goa is because like you said you you are now living there a lot of people choose to to live there it's a great place to live but uh, that's quite different from saying that you have the understanding and the knowledge to to actually be a political representative right now as i understand it uh, you are we're all of course indians first but you you are goan you have uh, what is it a goan Bengali mix is that? <laughs> so that's right. Uh, I was born to a Bengali mother right. and a Goan father. My father Vespace hails from the south of Goa, right. where my paternal grandfather was born in Veli, hmm. and my paternal grandmother was born in Tolikanto. Right. So that comes from a district of Asolna, which is South Goa. Okay. For me, tennis has taken me away, uh, traveling for so many years, serving the country. across grand slams and things but now that i've come back to live in goa hmm. and i feel like uh, the first step for me shrini is about gaining knowledge the first step for me is about understanding what do the people need okay for me i have spent many days now in goa trying to understand exactly where the difference can be made and and i see a huge opportunity if given the right vehicle if given the right position sure to make that difference i see huge opportunity in the state of goa but you don't you don't fear that i mean like while of course you have the the goa connection but because you've been living away for so many years you don't you don't fear that you could be seen as an outsider you know just as uh, i said earlier i was born to a bengali mother i was born to a goan father hmm. but through my whole career i've played for a saffron white and green we are indians sure me whether uh, i played at wimbledon or whether i played at the olympics right i did not play for a certain state i did not play for a certain religion i did not play for a color or a caste i played for india okay uh but you know when you said that you picked the trinamool and uh, of course like you said you have an old association with mamta banerji uh, and all of that but as a serious contender in goa and as you can imagine they are they are very very nascent in fact my researcher reminded me that the trinamool actually had fought in the 2012 assembly elections contested all 20 seats won zero seats lost the deposit in 19 seats and well you well yes sir shrini if you actually uh, you looked at my tennis career yeah i lost many first rounds before i even got to play at wimbledon right so in that uh, coming in now i think it's important not just to come in right at the top i think it's important to really get into the trenches okay and see okay. the difference that one can make winning and losing has never been something that i've been focused on but effort honesty hard work hmm. passion these are the things that i've always so, focused on and so you you don't think so so goa as you know i mean the two really only two players in town for the longest time has been the bjp and the congress between them uh they won every election and they control 60 70% of the vote share you neither of those two appeal to you well for me it's not about uh necessarily saying one party is bad or one party is good for me it's about opportunity okay here in this uh new career that i'm looking at hmm. it's not about having opponents it's about doing the best for the people okay for me my focus is on my race my focus is on what difference i can make to the people winning and losing is a part of life winning and okay. losing an election is just the same of winning and losing a tennis match okay but here for me it's about doing the best for our country and for are you going I... to be right got that are you going to be fighting the elections 
Well, I play for a team, Srini, as you know. I always have, whether it's tennis <laughs> or whether it's politics. Uh -huh. And in that, I'm going to let uh, the captain of my team, Mamta Didi, uh, decide that. But, I, you, but you're open to it. If she says contest the elections, you're open to that. I'm open to it. But at the same time, right now, Srini, I'm working very hard to gain knowledge. Okay. Right now, just as I did with tennis, there were many practice matches I played before I got to win Wimbledon. Okay. So right okay. now, it's about gaining knowledge, finding about the people, going to the people and learning about them, seeing what is needed in the state of Goa. All right. Well, uh, I guess learning, as you said, is the first step. But uh, anyway, all the best for your new uh, avatar, Leander Pays. And uh, I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk more about this closer to the elections. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Leander, for joining us. Thank you, Srini. Welcome back. Some tragic news from Kerala, where two former uh, beauty pageant winners, 2019 Miss Kerala, Anthi uh, Kabir, uh, who was 25, and runner-up Dr. Anjana Shajan, uh, 26, were killed in a horrific car crash on Monday. Uh, two men who were also in the Ford Figo car, uh, with one of them driving, were critically injured and are in hospital. The incident took place in the early hours when the driver was speeding on a highway in Kochi and smashed into a tree, according to the police. The driver may have lost control trying to dodge a scooter in its way, although the riders were hit and suffered minor injuries. Uh, both Ansi Kabir and Dr. Anjana Shajan were declared brought dead to the hospital. News from Punjab now and power rates have been slashed by 3 rupees per unit. Chief Minister Charanjit Singh Channi announced this. The new rates will be applicable from yesterday itself when the announcement was made. Taking a dig at the Ahmadmi Party Chief Arvind Kejiwal's poll promise of free electricity, Mr. Channi said that his government survey suggested people wanted cheap and not free power. Today, Punjab de Lokanu Bijli ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੱਡਾ ਤੋਹਫਾ ਦੀਵਾਲੀ ਦਾ ਦੇਣ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਕਿ ਸਾਰੇ ਰੇਟ 3 ਰੁਪਏ ਘੱਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 95% ਪਬਲਿਕ ਦੇ ਲੋਕ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਹਨ 95% ਲੋਕੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਟੈਰਿਫ ਹੈ ਉਹ 3 ਰੁਪਏ ਘੱਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਤੇ ਗ੍ਰੋਸ ਜੀਐਸਟੀ ਰੈਵਨਿਊ ਕਲੈਕਟਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਮੰਥ ਆਫ ਅਕਟੂਬਰ ਇਜ਼ ਅ 1.130127 crore that's the highest ever since the introduction of GST the goods and service tax mop up for the month of October stood at over 1.30 lakh crore 24% uh, higher than the GST revenues in the same month last year so the second highest ever uh, GST revenue collected in the month of October With that time for us to slip into a short break, on the other side we take a look at the vaccination drive in Karnataka. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now at a time when we're debating global inequity in access to COVID vaccines, there's a danger of over 7 lakh doses of COVID vaccines going waste in Karnataka. These are all lying with private hospitals. Over 7 lakh doses of COVID vaccine are lying unused in private hospitals across Karnataka. These include about 5 lakh doses of Covaxin that cost 1410 rupees for a shot and 2 lakh doses of Covishield that cost 780 rupees a dose. What's more, the expiry date for the vaccine stock is reportedly November. Oh, the short expiry which is within uh, November 30th is the expiry date for that. And 
people who want to pay and take it, they are uh, hesitating to take when it is available free of cost. Second thing, the cost of Covaxin uh, vaccine is higher than Covishield. Health workers point out that government hospitals offer both vaccines free of cost. There are adequate doctors and nurses to vaccinate. So the government facilities are preferred by the public. Uh, presently, I do not have an answer. Uh, we need to consult government in this regard. 80% of Karnataka's eligible population has got one dose. Less than 50% has got both doses. The private hospitals cannot sell their stock to the government sector without central intervention. These vaccines are precious. At a time when just about one in every three people in the country have got both doses of the vaccine. Authorities must prioritize the proper utilization of the available stock so that they don't go waste. With camera person Govind Murthy, Nehal Khidwai for NDTV. For 15 years now, Development Alternatives Tara Akshar program has been imparting literacy and numeracy skills to adult women across India. In these 15 years, close to 2.5 lakh women have been made literate in close to 2,000 villages. But more than just literacy, what Tara Akshar has given these women is control over their lives, the ability to make well-informed choices and the skills to earn an income and help their families. Rashmi Yadav hasn't come to the panchayat office with a problem. She has come to solve other people's problems. Rashmi heads the village panchayat in Nandanwara, a homemaker who was always in Parda. Rashmi now attends panchayat meetings and takes decisions for the community with a confidence that she credits the Tara Akshar program for. About an hour away in Bansi village, Guddi performs the role of a Samu Sakhi, looking after the functioning of 10 women self-help groups in the area. Learning how to read and write has changed her life, she says. It wasn't easy though. Some of these women had to overcome resistance at home and also derision from other people in the village. Not only did Guddi persuade the women to join the Tara Akshar program, she also helped organize them into self-help groups and open bank accounts for them. The Tara Akshar Literacy Program and the post-literacy Gyan Chopali sessions in Lalitpur have helped many women like Guddi. The skill learning goes beyond basic literacy and numeracy. It has helped Premvati set up a crockery business at home and Mala Devi open a grocery shop. <laughs> The aim is to make 5 million women literate by 2025 and if that happens, it will unleash the enormous potential that rural women of our nation constitute. With that time for us to sip into a short break, coming up on the other side, we speak to the neat topper from Telangana. Stay with us.
India will reach carbon neutrality by 2070, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced as part of a five-point action plan that included reducing emissions to 50% by 2030, making the boldest pledge on Monday at the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow, where he also urged developed countries to deliver on their promise of climate financing. India is among the major emitters, the third largest in the world, to have not uh, till now indicated any deadline or even a tentative pathway towards such a net zero goal. China and the United States, the other two major polluters, indicated 2060 and 2050 as potential deadlines for capping their net emissions. Net zero emissions refer to achieving an overall balance between greenhouse gas emissions produced and greenhouse gas emissions removed from the atmosphere. Burst 2070 tak Bharat net zero ka laks hasil karega. Now, while amplifying that India has steadfastly met its nationally determined contributions and is on track to meet its Paris Agreement commitments, the Prime Minister also raised India's climate commitments. The Prime Minister told other world leaders at COP26 that along the way to becoming net zero by 2070, India would increase the share of renewables in its energy mix to 50% by 2030. Friends, climate change per इस वैश्विक मंथन के बीच मैं भारत की ओर से इस चुनौती से निपटने के लिए पांच अमृत तत्व रखना चाहता हूं पंचामृत की सौगात देना चाहता हूं पहला भारत 2030 तक अपनी नॉन फोसिल एनर्जी कैपेसिटी को 500 गीगावाट तक पहुंचाएगा दूसरा भारत 2030 तक अपनी 50 परसेंट एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी से पूरी करेगा तीसरा भारत अब से लेकर 2030 तक के कुल प्रोजेक्टेड कार्बन एमिशन में एक बिलियन टन की कमी करेगा चौथा 2030 तक भारत अपनी अर्थव्यवस्था की कार्बन इंटेंसिटी को 45 परसेंट से भी कम करेगा so, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announcement that the nation will reach a net zero by the year 2070 was a scientifically calculated decision and not one under any pressure is what officials have said. This is the first time India has set for itself a target to achieve net zero. At the climate summit in Glasgow, the Prime Minister also announced the five targets as contributions to contain global warming. 2070 तक भारत नेट जीरो का लक्ष्य हासिल करेगा। Net zero occurs when carbon emitted into the atmosphere balances out with carbon removed from it. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is at the Glasgow UN summit on climate change, announced that India will get there 49 years from now. The UN summit's target for nations to achieve net zero is 2050. Officials in the government clarified that India was not under pressure to announce a target on net zero and that it was calculated scientifically and a well thought out move. India is not going to be pressurized, will not be pressurized and has never been pressurized in any way. And I think it is also based on science, it is a projection. There is every reason to feel that at that rate of uh, achievement and the levels at which our Prime Minister has picked our uh, commitments today, uh, 2070 uh, is something that would be uh, doable. In his national statement, Prime Minister Narendra Modi shared a five-target plan. India aims to increase non-fossil energy capacity to 500 gigawatts by 2030. By 2030, India will fulfill 50% of its energy requirement through renewable energy such as solar and wind power. Carbon emission to be cut down by 1 billion ton until 2030. India will bring down the carbon intensity of its economy by 45%. Lastly, India will achieve a target of net zero by 2070. <laughs> Meanwhile, the U.S. President Joe Biden announced contributions with focus on renewable energy. We're going to cut U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by well over 
a gigaton by 2030, while making it more affordable for consumers to save on their own energy bills, with tax credits for things like installing solar panels, weatherizing their homes, Lowering energy prices will also deliver cleaner air and water for our children, electrifying fleets of school buses, increasing credits for electric vehicles, and addressing legacy pollution. China had early announced that it would achieve net zero by 2060. There are mixed reactions to the Indian Prime Minister's national statement that was shared officially at the COP26 summit in Glasgow. Some believe that the target of 2070 for India to be able to achieve net zero is years away from the summit's original target. Some others who know India well believe that given its socio-economic concerns that already exist, this perhaps is a conservative but a realistic target. The Prime Minister has also spoken of a one-word movement called LIFE, Lifestyle for Environment, which perhaps indicates that he and his team of officials will try and motivate Indians and people all over to try and use small or big changes to take India towards its target. Radhika Ayer in Scotland, NDTV. Welcome, you're watching Good Morning India. I'm Gargi Rawat and those are the headlines we're tracking. But first, let's speak to the neat topper from Telangana, Minal Kuteri. Not only did he crack the coveted national eligibility come entrance test, but he scored a perfect 720. It's over to Uma Sudhir. Thank you, Gargi. A very good morning from Hyderabad. And I'm personally thrilled because this child has scored a perfect 720 on 720. Many, many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, you have been a consistently brilliant Thank performer you. through you, childhood, I understand. But uh, what did you do special for this one? Um, the I don't know. It's not like I have a particular strategy. But uh, the only thing that worked for me is what didn't work for others. Um, be it the way I approach the exam or my study schedule, like timetables work for others, it doesn't for me. So then I had a more free flow kind of uh, study pattern. Like I used to start with a goal, like this day I have to do this much, but not with a timetable. So along the way, I figured out, you know, how to uh, finish that in time. So I didn't have a set schedule because that never worked for me. In school also, actually, I've tried a lot to set timetables. Uh, did not work. So I think that kind people of, talk about uh, 16 hours, 18 uh, hours. Yeah, what yeah. your what is your schedule like? Uh, I know you didn't give up on your uh, other hobbies I and interests. Did not. Um, <clears throat> listening to 16 hours, 18 hours and all can be very daunting actually. Um, I have a lot of other hobbies. I watch TV a lot um, like half of the world population. I was hooked on to Prime Video and Netflix this uh, last year or so. Apart from that, I play video games a lot. Um, occasionally read books as well. So I have a lot of other hobbies. So I gave enough time for that. That's where actually I tried, you know, in the timetable, like this much time for hobbies, this much time for studies, but that didn't work. So as while studying, if I felt like I was feeling a little stressed or tired, I'd unwind for a while and then come back so and i never could manage six i i haven't even come close if i'm being honest so <laughs> uh, uh, around uh, outside of college hours i can manage four hours if i'm very lucky five hours really but uh, that's about it and well that worked for me so i could but manage. that was intense and focused study yes that that's where actually my all the you know the mm -hmm. breaks i took it helped me like i felt happy in the sense that you know i was still able to pursue my other interests um without compromising on my studies. So because of the fact that I took sufficient breaks, those four hours or five hours, whatever it was, I was able to make full use of that. Okay. Yours was an unusual year where you couldn't attend college at all, yeah. coaching classes right. at all. And uh, how did that affect you? And the exam also got postponed uh, yes, from yes, August yes. once right. to again September. Uh, so um, it, it affected me in only negative ways, if I'm <clears throat> being honest in the beginning. Well, I, do, I didn't usually watch a lot of TV. So... When the pandemic struck, that's when I uh, discovered Netflix culture, so to speak. Oh <laughs> You're really a bad influence for students <laughs> saying yes, yes, I know. So it was like, you know, in the probably the most crucial year of my uh, academics so far, that is when I discovered Netflix, which is really bad timing if I think about it. But um, <clears throat> so because of that, it was very easy to be distracted. As it is, you're surrounded by a laptop, a mobile phone and a TV at home. And if you're taking your classes also there, so... <clears throat> In the beginning, I really wasn't very productive. 
if I think about it. But along the way, I'm not saying I became very productive all of a sudden. I still could manage only four hours, but I was able to make the best out of that time. So I think that's where you know the pandemic. While it was a little, you know. a bumpy road in the beginning i managed later on I okay what about social media you uh, i do not have much social media I, I, even when it comes to whatsapp i use my mother's phone number so i am in touch with my friends like through call and all but social media presence i don't have okay the last uh, month or two it was kind of getting to be a drag isn't it with the covid oh. pandemic uh yes uh, you're saying like before the exam uh yeah. before the exam uh the they say right the final mile is always the most difficult one so you know by then fatigue sets in and as it is our exam had always been postponed so uh, <clears throat> for a long time now it had been like that but um well i was able to push on thankfully but yeah the, the last month is always the most that's when it's most difficult to motivate yourself to study uh, so i used to listen to a lot of music matlab i know everyone loves music but then i listen to a lot of music so that was the main thing which helped me you know calm down and keep going that was uh, another of my favorite ways to unwind apart from all my hobbies what did your parents do or didn't do reeti okay, can i call you um uh, <laughs> A dad of um, Renal is, in fact, an HR consultant. A mom is a software engineer. Uh, I know the grandmother, in fact, was the one who was uh, coaching him since childhood. And uh, so the entire family, in a sense, comes together when a child has to write such an exam, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, I think by God's grace, uh, anything we told him, he always had a positive uh, outlook. I mean, and uh, used to take it in. even if he feels a little irritated at that time but he sees he reasons so that i think is his credit <laughs> okay when did you decide you want to become a medical doctor i do know that you were going through the phase of chemical engineering uh, i'm yes, going to yes, do yes. and so on and so, so forth yeah. uh, around i mean up till like 7th 8th chemistry was my favorite subject so that's why it was like chemical engineer then um, <clears throat> well primarily due to video games i guess uh, i became interested in the it's very childish now that i think about it so <clears throat> you spoke then, about armed forces also yes, i remember yes 9th 10th and all i i was in that phase. even when i started preparing for neat actually <clears throat> it was not about doctor it was about army doctor particularly along the way you know i became more and more interested in the medical aspect of it so then it became about you know, a, about becoming a doctor not particularly an army doctor but it started off that way so from through the army doctor route i came to my final um, wish of being a doctor people have this stereotype about children studying from class 6 coaching <laughs> and you know they'll start taking this coaching from right, then right. onwards and no tv nothing else <laughs> you should do um you only took coaching in class 11 and 12 yes 11 and and for that i have my family to thank matlab uh, some of my <coughs> classmates also went for uh, coaching in 9th and 10th and all but uh, thanks to them i was able to lead a very very normal as unstressed as possible school life because i only had to handle my 10th class ke academics uh, nothing else so for that i have them to thank so my school life i was able to enjoy to the fullest and then when i came to 11th and 12th i could focus on neat i didn't really think about it before that so so don't get stressed is your mantra what do you want to tell to students out there all of them looking at you as that model to emulate um don't be afraid to experiment like uh, as you had pointed out you know you read so many stories about toppers and so many students putting in 10 hours 12 hours some going on to say 16 hours and all so don't get daunted by that matlab figure out what works for you if it's fewer hours a day that's fine if you're able to perform well it doesn't matter if someone else is you know putting in more hours than you what matters is that you're able to make the most of your time okay so all i would say is you know be free to experiment uh, be it in your study pattern okay very very quickly huh. dream ahead what is your road ahead uh if this one thing i've learned is that you know interest change a lot i started with chemical engineer right so as such i've not thought about it my knowledge of medicine is also very very limited like the scope of the field itself so while okay, covid out, pandemic didn't scare you away from medicine if anything it motivated me further i mean they were the country's last line of defense right against the biggest crisis we faced in a long okay. time so it, that was when you yeah. know i was like i want to be one of those people kind of thing okay many many congratulations so someone who took inspiration after the covid pandemic to become a medical doctor and the road ahead looks certainly very very bright his mantra don't get stressed out see what works for you back to you gargi all right uh, uma thanks so much uh, for that and minal an articulate young man and also talking about watching shows and playing video games and uh, listening to a lot of music uh, to de stress thanks uma for that 
In other news now, let's get you the latest from COP26 and India's commitments there. India will reach carbon neutrality by 2070 is what Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced as part of a five-point action plan that included reducing emissions to 50% by 2030, making the boldest pledge on Monday at the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow, where he also urged developed countries to deliver on their promise of climate financing. India is among the major emitters, the third largest in the world, to not have till now indicated any deadline or even a tentative pathway towards a net zero goal. China and the United States, the other two major polluters, indicated 2060 and 2050 as potential deadlines for capping their net emissions. A net zero emissions refer to achieving an overall balance between greenhouse gas emissions produced and greenhouse gas emissions removed from the atmosphere. Friends, climate change per is Vaishwik Manthan ke beech, mein Bharat ki aur se इस चुनौती से निपटने के लिए पांच अमृत तत्व रखना चाहता हूं पंचामृत की सौगात देना चाहता हूं पहला भारत 2030 तक अपनी नॉन फोसिल एनर्जी कैपेसिटी को 500 गीगावॉट तक पहुंचाएगा दूसरा भारत 2030 तक अपनी 50 परसेंट एनर्जी रिक्वायरमेंट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी से पूरी करेगा तीसरा भारत अब से लेकर 2030 तक के कुल प्रोजेक्टेड कार्बन एमिशन में एक बिलियन टन की कमी करेगा चौथा 2030 तक भारत अपनी अर्थव्यवस्था की कार्बन इंटेंसिटी को 45% se bhi kam karega. Prime Minister Modi's announcement that the nation will reach net zero by the year 2070 was a scientifically calculated decision, not one under any pressure, is what officials have said. This is the first time India has set for itself a target to achieve net zero. At the climate summit in Glasgow, the Prime Minister also announced five targets as contributions to contain global warming. 2070 tak Bharat Net zero ka lux hasil karega. Net zero occurs when carbon emitted into the atmosphere balances out with carbon removed from it. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is at the Glasgow UN summit on climate change, announced that India will get there 49 years from now. The UN summit's target for nations to achieve net zero is 2050. Officials in the government clarified that India was not under pressure to announce a target on net zero and that it was calculated scientifically and a well thought out move. India is not going to be pressurized, will not be pressurized and has never been pressurized in any way. And I think it is also based on science, it is a projection. There is every reason to feel that at that rate of uh, achievement and the levels at which our Prime Minister has picked our uh, commitments today, uh, 2070 uh, is something that would be uh, doable. In his national statement, Prime Minister Narendra Modi shared a five-target plan. India aims to increase non-fossil energy capacity to 500 gigawatts by 2030. By 2030, India will fulfill 50% of its energy requirement through renewable energy such as solar and wind power. Carbon emission to be cut down by 1 billion ton until 2030. India will bring down the carbon intensity of its economy by 45%. Lastly, India will achieve a target of net zero by 2070. <laughs> Meanwhile, the U.S. President Joe Biden announced contributions with focus on renewable energy. We're going to cut U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by well over a gigaton by 2030, while making it more affordable for consumers to save on their own energy bills, with tax credits for things like installing solar panels, weatherizing their homes. Lowering energy prices will also deliver cleaner air and water for our children, electrifying fleets of school buses, increasing credits for electric vehicles, and addressing legacy pollution. China had earlier announced that it would achieve net zero by 2060. There are mixed reactions 
to the Indian Prime Minister's national statement that was shared officially at the COP26 summit in Glasgow. Some believe that the target of 2070 for India to be able to achieve net zero is years away from the summit's original target. Some others who know India well believe that given its socio-economic concerns that already exist, this perhaps is a conservative but a realistic target. The Prime Minister has also spoken of a one-word movement called LIFE, Lifestyle for Environment, which perhaps indicates that he and his team of officials will try and motivate Indians and people all over to try and use small or big changes to take India towards its target. Radhika Ayer in Scotland, NDTV. News are back home now and Maharashtra's former Home Minister Anil Deshmukh was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate after more than 12 hours of questioning at their office in Mumbai in connection with the money laundering case. Mr. Deshmukh, who had stepped down earlier this year from his post amid a row over bribery allegations against him, was refused relief by the Bombay High Court on Friday as he approached for the cancellation of the summons by the probe agency. In a video statement on Monday, the 71-year-old NCP leader had said all allegations against him were false. Mr. Deshmukh was accused of corruption and extortion by Mumbai's ex-top cop Parambir Singh. In a letter to the Chief Minister of Thakre, Parambir Singh had accused Mr. Deshmukh of interference and using the police to extort up to 100 crore every month. Parambir Singh, uh, however, is also currently missing. We have cooperated in the investigation. We are showing the section 3 in section 3. आगे आप लोगों की क्या रणनीति है? हम कल कोर्ट में उनको प्रोड्यूस करेंगे तो वहाँ हम रिमांड को आपस करेंगे। सवाल पूर्व गृहमंत्री की गिरफ्तारी होने से समाप्त नहीं होता। उनके आका कौन हैं? मुंबई जैसे शहर से हर महीने की 100 करोड़ की वसूली, पांच वर्षों को जोड़ा जाए तो 6000 करोड़ की वसूली, पूरे कई सारे डिपार्टमेंट हैं उनको जोड़े तो कई लाख करोड़ों की वसूली पूर्व गृहमंत्री के आका कौन इनके हिस्सेदार कौन हैं साझेदार कौन हैं कौन से नेता हैं कौन से दल हैं उनके नाम सामने आना आवश्यक है with that time for us to slip into a short break on the other side details of how accounting for bipoles in three Lok Sabha and 29 assembly seats is taking place today. Welcome back. Now, counting of votes for three Lok Sabha and 29 Assembly seats across 13 states and the Union Territory of Dadra and Nag Nagar Haveli has begun. Of 29 seats, the BJP held six, the Congress nine, the rest were with regional parties. The Assembly by-elections held on Saturday were held for five seats in Assam. Four in Bengal, three each in Madhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh and Meghalaya, two each in Bihar, Karnataka and Rajasthan and one seat in Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Maharashtra, Mizoram and Telangana. Now the Lok Sabha seats for which by-elections were held are Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Mandi in Himachal Pradesh and Khandwa in Madhya Pradesh. The sitting members had all died in these three constituencies. Time for a break. After that, we discuss and take a look at the Prime Minister's commitments at COP26 and the challenges ahead.
Welcome back. Well, let's now take a look at India's commitments at COP26. India will reach carbon neutrality by 2070 is what Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced as part of an ambitious five-point action plan that included reducing emissions to 50% by 2030, making the boldest pledge on Monday at the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow, where he also urged developed countries to deliver on their promise of climate financing. Now, India is among the major emitters, the third largest in the world, to have not till now indicated any deadline or even a tentative pathway towards a net zero goal. China and the United States, the other two major polluters, have indicated 2060 and 2050 as potential deadlines for capping their net emissions. Well, to talk more about India's commitments and the road ahead, we're joined now by Samrat Sen Gupta, Program Director, Climate Change and Renewable Energy, Center for Science and Environment, uh, Vimlendhu Ja, founder of Switch, Switcha India and environmentalist, uh, Bharti Chaturvedi, founder and director, Chintan Environmental Research and Action group and Aniket Gupta, student and environmental activist, Diana Award recipient for 2020. Thank you so much all uh, for joining me on the program and uh, Samrat Sen Gupta, first to you, your views on India's commitment uh, for, uh, you know, capping our emissions by 2070, something that's been, uh, uh, you know, appreciated by many. Others have said it's, it's a bit too late, it's too many years ahead, uh, while uh, the officials have said it's the most realistic uh, pledge that we could make. Yes, uh, uh, the commitment came last night uh, uh, during uh, our Prime Minister's speech uh, at the uh, event. Uh, it is, seems to be progressive, but they have talked about their first commitment that non-fossil energy capacity to 500 gigawatt. Earlier target was 450, so a progressive of 500 gigawatt. But uh, India will meet 50% of its energy requirement. There is a big thing. Energy, if really it means it's not a just a uh, communication gap, it's energy requirement, not power requirement, that's huge. 50% from renewable, I think it's a huge thing and we need to see the details of the plan, how India will achieve to it. Because when we talk about energy, it is not simply power, it is the transport sector, it is the industry where direct use of fossil fuel in terms of petroleum is uh, getting included, technically. All right, Bharti Chaturvedi, your views on this, uh, you know, uh, a big commitment towards renewable energies, but uh, really we have to see whether we walk the talk and as, uh, as, 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 as uh, you know, we mentioned just now that we have to see what the plan really is for the road ahead. Yes, and um, I want to, I, I think it's really important also that um, in his uh, punch that the Prime Minister also talked about um, asking for uh, finance for the poor and uh, ask the rich countries for finance. I think that's extremely important because it's not really carbon finance. It's really payback time because many of the countries and particularly India, you know, we come from a history of um, a huge, um, you know, drain of wealth uh, from India. And now we have actually built ourselves up and that has put uh, some carbon. Of course, India puts out very little compared to the rest of the world, but about 7%. So we, we, we do that. And so I think in, at some level, I also look at it as, um, you know, payback time. On the other hand, I think uh, what I expect, apart from money from the developed world, is really rejigging the economic framework in which they work, because this kind of um, economic um, culture where you where you you know worship people for making trillions and millions of dollars um, you know and going into space and those kinds of things are not going to take us ahead and there's no way to green them and that's all uh, not possible so not only should they be uh, giving out money because that is very if you don't do these two things both then we can't get justice. And I think that was something quite important that the Prime Minister also uh, gestured to, the idea of justice. And you cannot get justice in the current economic paradigm of the rich countries because the poor will continue to have much less access to resources, be hit by whether they're typhoons or forest fires or what you may have. And they will continue to, you will continue to see a bigger and bigger gap, not only between countries, but even within countries like uh, uh, you'll see a gap between the rich and the poor. So I think it's a very, very, very ambitious and important um, statement by the prime minister. But I think, um, I think what the wealthy countries do, not only in terms of carbon finance, but 
completely drastically overturning their economic uh, models by 2030 is really the way ahead instead of this uh, really have to watch out for thing. All right, and those commitments, Vim Lenduja, in fact, on that, the Prime Minister also talked about, you know, this mantra of life, and he called it lifestyle for environment, which I thought was very interesting and something that, as, as, as Bharti is saying, you need to think more about. Please, uh, you know, uh, it was right kind of noises that were actually made at this World Forum, not just by the Prime Minister, but by the other world leaders. But it's very, very important for all of us to understand that these noises or these pledges, so to say, have been made historically for last several sure. several years. As in the commitments that were made in Paris in 2015, many of them have not been even met. So, you know, I as much as I would like to congratulate the Prime Minister to really make those five commitments, uh, to really talk about 2017 net zero. However, no one even knows what net zero means uh, in, in its, in its best, uh, best way. Uh, the fact that, you know, India is going to double its coal production, the fact that coal, uh, coal India, which is the biggest miner, uh, you know, is going to uh, mine 1 billion tons by 2024. There's a lot of irony and paradox in, in this entire, you know, climate conversation that we're having, having globally as well as locally. So these mantras sound great. These mantras, you know, read great. But at the end of the day, what happens on the ground? And that is where if the real, you know, uh, maza of climate change negotiation or climate change action will be. At the end of the day, the way we treat our forests, the way we look at our environment impact assessment, the way we actually look at construction ecologically sensitive zones, the way we dilute or not dilute uh, our environmental norms, that is where the real impact is. So climate change can create a cloudburst in Uttarakhand. All, all right, I understand what you're saying, you know, you know, making commitments there and what's happening on the ground. You just recently had a Minister Nitin Gadkari talking about how, you know, in, environmental laws are coming in the way of development and stalling in development. He, he was speaking in Goa, but uh, Aniket Gupta, your view as, as one of the youngest here on the panel and uh, as Vimlendu said, yes, a lot of uh, talk has happened in the past as well. A lot of commitments have been made. None of them have been, uh, you know, essentially binding and that is something that, you know, a lot of people are losing hope hope from these uh, big forums and uh, whether the countries will genuinely walk the talk. What is your view? Uh, well, I think West really needs to pay up just as the environment minister yesterday said that the developed nations have failed to meet the uh, the annual climate finance of $100 billion support to the developing nation. And also it's important to note that uh, uh, our prime minister just yesterday said that uh, the 17 from the 17 percent of world population in India, we are responsible for only five percent of the emissions. And also, as India steps forward with new climate goals, especially talking about India, as our Prime Minister announced the uh, five point five points agenda towards tackling the climate change, it has definitely thrown its ball in the court of well up nations. Mm, and 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 actually, real climate action includes the climate finance as well, just as Bharti said. And it's great to know that he has included how it's gonna be financed and demanded the urgent uh, world related dollar as soon as possible. And and listening to yesterday's headlines, so many uh, news platform called out India that it it is. It is it is taking twenty years more than uh, of what India promised in the Paris Climate Agreement. But I would just say that it's it's much more ambitious than the countries like China or European Union who have promised to achieve the net zero by twenty sixty. So right. And officials say it, it's the most realistic target uh, for us. Uh, Samrat Sen Gupta, now if we take a look at the COP26, what is your view on, on what's happening so far? The commitments, uh, you know, uh, 100 world leaders have also committed to reversing or, uh, uh, you know, ending deforestation by 2030. So another, you know, very, uh, this is one of the first pledges that, that has been made at COP26. Uh, COP26 happening on the backdrop of... Uh, post-COVID. The COVID scenario has changed the world views towards nature. 
and it is somehow getting reflected somehow getting reflected about the uh, at least about the talk at this moment climate justice is getting back to its uh, mainstream Di- uh, common but differentiated responsibility which was sidelined during paris discussion should get mainstream now and india and other developing country should push for it that has well been observed in various speeches and we have to now see how the developed world is going to meet the requirement of 1.5 degree centigrade there is a huge gap huge gap b- between the various ndcs and the uh, revised ndcs has been committed uh which uh, accounts for a, approximately of 38 uh, gigaton per year uh, from now to a 37 gigaton only reduction in uh, 2030 where it requires to be at the 18 gigaton per year emission by 2030 to meet that 1.5 degree centigrade i am not too much um, uh, uh, means in support of the Uh, uh net zero kind of uh, commitment it is actually a ploy to defer the action down the stream in second or third decade but we will be losing the time if we cannot act in, the, in this decade we are losing on climate change there are several countries the small island developing country the uh, highly vulnerable uh, ldcs uh for them it is a just a survival or this is kind of thing so right that is getting back into the into the discourse and possibly the developed countries had understood they are also going to be affected by the climate change it has seen by last half decade that their backyard is also getting affected uh, in north north america the heat wave the, there's a huge flood in europe Uh, everywhere you know, these extreme the weather North events also, i think have really yeah. brought the reality of what we're doing to the climate you know right in, in in everybody's face but thank you so much that's all the time we have and clearly uh, uh, commitments being made but it's for us the media activists like you experts uh, to keep up the pressure keep up the vigil and try to hold uh, authorities to account thank you so much for joining us on the program Now some tragic news from Kerala where two former beauty pageant winners 2019 Miss Kerala and Sri Kabir and and runner up Dr Anjana Shahjan they were just 25 26 were killed in a horrific car crash on Monday uh, two men who were also in that vehicle a Ford Figo uh, with one of them uh, driving were critically injured and are in hospital this incident took place in the early hours when the driver was speeding on a highway in Kochi and smashed into a tree uh, the driver may have lost control trying to dodge a scooter in its way although the riders were hit and suffered minor injuries uh, both Ansi Kabir and Dr Anjana Shahjan were declared brought dead to the hospital All right more uh, developments in Punjab where the chief minister has rejected uh, the uh, resignation given by the Punjab AG APS Diol he resigned from his post uh, but this was uh, rejected a Sidhu speech attacking the state government is said to be the reason according to sources Diol's appointment as AG had created a controversy since he had represented tainted cops accused in the sacrilege case there in Punjab and Navjot Sidhu had been demanding his replacement as as well let's go across all right so navjot sidhu are demanding the replacement of both the dgp and ag but the chief minister rejecting that resignation